a teenager, everything changed. His new problems were fear, humiliation, and bullies. And then one day Jerry was inspired. And his life was changed forever. Golden boy, that's what they call Atlanta's Jerry Trimble. His trademarks include a year-round golden pants, golden pants, bright gold hair. He's also well known for the flash of his feet. He can make his legs move in rapid fire succession from virtually any position. He started karate when he was 14 years old to handle a bully problem at school. That problem is obviously behind him now, as he aspires to capture the world light welterweight crown currently held by Leroy Taylor. He is the U.S. light welterweight champion and is ranked as the number one world contender. Jerry Golden Boy Trimble. for having me. Um, that video wasn't to impress you, but to show you that if you really want something and you're willing to put your energy into it, anything is possible. Sky's the limit if you put your energy into it. Now, how do I know this to be true? It's because I did it, and so can you. And I began doing it when I was 13 years old. If a shy, insecure, fearful bully kid from a small town in Kentucky can make his dreams come true, anyone can. See, the thing with most people is they end up settling for less than the best for themselves and end up living an unfulfilled life, unhappy with what they do for a living. You guys know someone like that? Lots of people. Sad. There's a saying that says, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Confucius said. So please, guys, I implore you, do yourself a favor and do not settle. Go after your dreams with all your might because every single person in here, every single person that is born has the capabilities, has the abilities to be great. There is no excuses. You want to be Dr. Lori, scientist, director, producer, actor, stuntman, no matter what it is. You start learning how to do it now at your young age like I did and like so many other people have done. You start doing it now, begin now, you will be great later. I guarantee you. You gotta put the, you gotta put the effort into it. Begin now and be great later. Find something that you love to do that when you do it, you get excited. And it makes you happy and you're like, I oh, I really enjoy doing this. I'm doing I'm doing movies now and I'm speaking to young people. Those are the two things that I want to do. Now I figured out I'm writing a book now. Oh. Discovering new gifts. How do you do it? How do you find something that you're passionate about? How do you find something, to, an answer to what you would do if you couldn't fail? Three things. Simple. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Discover your gifts. And go after your dreams. Does it? That's it. Discover your, or get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone and do it often. I mean, don't get me wrong, the comfort zone can be a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. When you get out of your comfort zone, that's where magic happens. I'm telling you, you get out of your comfort zone, you do it all the time, you become stronger. I know, trust me, it works. 
You become stronger every single time. Number two, discover your gifts. Discover your God-given gifts. Like I said, every person in here, you were born with talents, abilities, and gifts in you. You just need to figure out what they are. You need to find out what they are. And the way you find out is you try things. You try new things. If this doesn't work, though, you try something else. And you keep trying until you find that thing that just that you do, you love. When you find those gifts, those talents, and those abilities, they become your superpowers. Those gifts that you're born with, that you tapped into, that you worked on, they become your superpowers. You use those gifts to go after your dreams. And you live an amazing life. Anyone can do it. I mean, if I can if it tells me anyone can do it. What prevents you from trying new things? What prevents you from trying new things, getting out of your comfort zone, and going after what you want in life? Yes. Yeah. Doubt. Doubt. What else? Come on, throw some things out. Yes. Um, work. 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 Okay, yes. Ignorance. Ignorance, yes. Yes. Rights issues. Rights issues, okay. Rights issues, yes. Discouragement. Discouragement, yes. Reality. Reality, okay, yes. Bold. Bold? Yes. Bold, yes. Being bold. I'm sorry? Being bold, that's what you meant. Like, yes. All these things add up to be the same thing. Fear. Your fears are like doubts. They just suck you back into your comfort zone. And they prevent you from being, being the person you were born to be and living the life that you were meant to live. And believe me, if anyone knows fear and doubt and hurt, it's me, and I would like to make you think I used to be an expert on it, because I dealt with it all the time. 13 years old, I was bullied on a regular basis. I was a shy, insecure, stressed out kid that was bullied constantly. And the way stress affected me, I mean, we all get stressed out, dang. but the way stress affected me was different than most people. When I got stressed out, it wouldn't just eat me up inside. When I got stressed out, it would show its ugly self outside. My face would break out in acne all over. To make it even worse, when I got stressed out, I broke out in cold sores covering the upper and lower part of my lips, and I had this, this rash all over my neck. And to top it all off, I even had my own personal bully named Mark. Any Marks in here? Mark was this big kid who would always mess with me. He was a school jock, jerk, and giant, and I was his favorite target. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted what every kid wanted. I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be really good at something. That's what, what as, as a child, as a young person, I wanted to be good at something, and I, and I was too afraid to go try things and find out what I was good at. One day after school, I was in my bedroom crying. My dad comes in, and he knew what was wrong. It was the same thing as always from being bullied. And he comes in, and my dad would give me nuggets of advice, and they would never make sense. But for some reason, on this particular day, something made sense, and something clicked in me. My dad comes in, and he goes, Sean, you got to quit worrying about what other people think about you. I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> he goes, son, you need, you need, you need some confidence. I said, well, dad, dad, tell me something I don't know. He goes, you got to find out what you're good at and get real good at it. You got to try new things. And I went, for the first time, my dad actually started making sense. And then he said something that just stuck with me. And to this day, it resonates with me and everything that I do. He said. Sometimes you got to be scared in order to grow. And I went, Ooh, okay. So the next day, I said, Wow, well, I got to get out and I got to try things. And so I said, Okay, let's do sports. Maybe I can become an athlete. I, I don't know. It seems like all the jocks, they have the girls and they have everything. And everybody liked them. They were the, yeah. So I said, Maybe I can become a professional athlete. So I tried sports. Well, after being teased by players from track, Swimming, basketball, and football, I quit all of that. But it was one day after football practice that everything changed. You guys know what a plot point in a movie is, right? Well, this is a big plot point in my life. 
I was the last player leaving the football field. Took my shoulder pads off, and in a split second, somebody yanks them out of my hand, boom, and hurls them across the street. I turn back, it's my bully Mark, and two of his thug buddies. He comes up, he says, Trevor, he says, what are you doing on the team still? He says, you're the worst player we got. What are you doing us all a favor? Quit! And I'm like, I, uh, he comes up, pushes me so hard, my feet go up in the air, bang, I hit the ground like a ton of bricks. He jumps on top of me. As I start getting up, he starts slapping me, and he starts kneeing me. And by that time, the two thug buddies are smacking me. They're kicking me. They're spitting on me. And Mark scoops up a pile of cigarettes, of cigarette butts and dirt, and he shoves them in my mouth. It was so gross. It was, I started gagging. He says, he slams me back to the ground. He says, Dribble, if you don't quit. And he says, I said, oh, man, I quit. I quit. I freaking quit, Mark. I quit. I'm done. Thank God somebody from across the street yelled, What are you boys doing over there? Mark and his thug buddies get up. They bolt out. They bolt across the street and take off. I get up, grab my shoulder pads, and I run all the way home, crying all the way home. The next day, I threw on the towel, and I quit football. The next day, I broke up with my piggy bank, what money I did have, and I ran away from home. I was 13 years old. I was depressed. I contemplated suicide, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I'm just walking the streets at 13 years old, my, my hometown, and then a couple of hours go by and I look up and there's the movie theater. And I look at the movie theater and my choices were Planet of the Apes, and I looked at the other sites in the second cinema, there was a poster of a guy doing a flying sidekick in the air. It was Chinese Connection, starring Bruce Lee. When Bruce Lee jumped onto the screen, <laughs> something sparked in me that I'd never felt before. It felt so good. After the movie, I ran home and I asked my dad, and I'm like, hey dad, hey, hey dad, can I join karate? Hey, this guy, uh, Bruce Lee, hey, can, 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 can I join Jen? My dad looked at me and goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> dad, you quit at everything you start. He's right. I did quit everything I started. But that spark was already lit. And I thought, maybe I can be good at this. Shoot, maybe I can be great at it. I mean, he did tell me to try new things, right? And this was a new thing. But could it be the right thing? Only one way to find out. So with the rest of the money I had, boom, I ran to the, to the bookstore and I bought every martial arts magazine I could buy. I ran home, I put them all over the floor, opened it to the pages of the techniques of the kicks of the punches of the strikes, and I'm sitting there, and I started training via the magazine master. Wow. That spark grew so much because I put that energy out there. You want something bad enough? Put the energy out there. Ask and you will receive. Put it out there. For my 14th birthday, that spark was so high, my parents enrolled me into a Taekwondo Karate Academy. I remember my first day at the dojo, like it was yesterday, I was in the, in the, in the bathroom, I was in my uniform, barefoot, I was standing there looking at myself in the mirror, looking all goofy, and I'm like, oh my God, what if they, what if they laugh at me? What if, what if I'm no good? What if they make fun of me? I was talking myself into quitting again. Somebody bangs on the door, scares the crap out of me. I run outside. There's a, there's a class. My class is just getting ready to start. I jump in the class. Johnny, yeah! Johnny! Johnny! I was terrified. But I did it. Sometimes you got to be scared in order to grow. Remember my bully Mark? <laughs> I was in the locker room after gym class. I'm in the locker room. I see Mark standing in the corner of his eye. Just seething, just, and I'm like, oh God, no. No, 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 no. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this today. Oh shoot, oh shoot. So I'm like, I turn around, boom, Mark steps in front of me. He goes, Trimble? He says, you think you know karate? And you don't know nothing. You're just a punk, sissy loser. And I'm like looking around, and everybody's looking around, and they're like, and I can hear somebody go, He's got life insurance. <laughs> I try to step around. Mark, he steps in front of me. Boom! He pushes me up, pushes me back into the corner. I'm trapped. Nowhere to go. He steps in closer, and I'm like, oh, I have no idea what I was going to do. He steps in. He leans in. He goes, 
and see what you got. Pizza face. Let's just say I was never bullied again. Whoa. Never. <laughs> remember this advice. Remember this. Karma is real. What comes around goes around. That energy that you inflict on someone else, eventually, I guarantee it, will come back to you and it won't be pretty. Just like it did for my bully Mark. Except for it might not be a punch or a kick to the face, it might be something much worse. But it will come back to you. And know this, you are better than that. You weren't born a bully. You weren't born a jerk. You weren't born mean. You weren't born a loser. You learned it. And if you learn something, you can unlearn it. You want to be remembered as someone that builds people up. That's positive. Because that energy, that positive building up energy, it'll come back to you. Oh my God, who wants to live a miserable life walking around, uh, trying to uh, just uh, do that? Because that's what bullies feel inside. So be someone that is remembered as someone that builds people up. Be a superhero. Be a modern day superhero. That's what I like to think of myself, a modern day superhero. I try to build people up. I try to encourage them, be positive. So, yeah. So don't, you know, just if you're thinking about it, oh, no, get that out of your head, brother. Get that out of your head. That out. Martial arts taught me a lot more than just how to punch or kick or how to defend myself. Oh, it taught me so much more. People think martial arts is all about punching and kicking and fighting and grappling and, ah, and all the hard, ew, violent stuff. Oh my God, martial arts is so much more than that. That is just a smidgen of what martial arts is really about. Three top things I could say. Somebody said, well, hey, give, give me like three things that martial arts really taught you that, ah. And I went, probably the three things martial arts taught me more than anything else, the importance of setting goals. Oh, God, setting goals. Goals are the building blocks of your future, your dreams, and your life. You gotta set goals. Of those that set goals, how many of you write them down? Yes. Good. You don't write them down, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Get them out of your head, on the paper, out of your head, on the paper, into the world, out of your head, on the paper, into the world, so they become real. They become possible. And if you have a lot of things to do in this life, if you don't and you give up, you give up, the haters win. When you quit, the haters win. So put this stuff, get it out there. You got a journal? You guys writing journals? Oh man, write the journal. Get the journal out. Write your thoughts down. Start communicating with yourself. Because like I said, you're the only one that can make things happen. Setting goals. Whoa, God. Martial arts taught me how to set goals. God, I mean, I set goals. You gotta set goals. Second thing it taught me. Oh, I don't know. I don't know which one is more important. I think they're all pretty equal. Work on yourself. Work on yourself every day. A little bit. Learn something new. Challenge yourself. Just work on yourself every day. Those gifts that you have. And again, if you don't know what those gifts are, and if you hit, let's say you got four, four gifts right now that you know you're good at. You're good at this, you're good at writing, you're good at this. I don't know, maybe you got three, four, one gift. You've got more, you've got a ton more. I'm fine, damn, at my age, I'm still finding out what my gifts are. I'm finding new gifts. It's a lot of new learning. It's a lot of new out of the comfort zone. Find out those gifts, get really good at those gifts because the better you are at your gifts, the more, the more, Hopeful your life is. So learn what you get. To, make sure you work on those gifts. Work on those gifts. Work on yourself. Third thing it really taught me. Ah. Show me your friends, and I will show you your future. You get that? Show me your friends, and I will show your future. Surround yourself with positive people. Stay away from. I, I like to consider myself as someone who is allergic to negative people. <laughs> Negative people, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't care to be around them. You either, if they're family friends, you either get them help, or get rid of them. But just, you don't need that energy. So surround yourself with positive people, people that build you up, people that have dreams, people that have goals like you, people that encourage you. You got that? Set goals, work on yourself, and surround yourself with positive people. Now, with all this new information, these new gifts, and these this growing experience that I had at a young age, at, I think I was like 18, when I graduated high school, I said, I'm using these things that I got, these new gifts, and I'm, go I'm going to go after the world championship. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia to pursue my dream of becoming the world champion kickboxer. And after winning the Kentucky State Championship, 
the, the Georgia State Championship, the Southeast Championship, and the United States Championship. I was getting friends always. I was getting the popularity and friends I always wanted. It was like now everyone wanted to be my friend. They'd be like, hey, Golden Boy, what's up, man? Hey, Golden Boy, anything you need, bro? Anything you need, man? We want out this week. It's all on me, bro. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That's what they called me, Golden Boy. <laughs> I had gold hair. That's not an exaggeration. It was, I was like a, a cartoon character. <laughs> I had a gold hair, gold tan, gold chains, gold rings on every finger. I had the Mr. T starter kit. <laughs> I had a gold dog. Everything was gold. The closer I got to becoming world champion, the more fights I had, there was more temptations in my life. More people wanted to gear me down the wrong path. But I kept looking at my, my goals in my journal. I kept look, reviewing my dreams. you got to review your stuff. you got to go through it again and again and again and again. It's, you got to make it happen, and, you, and, you, and it's practice. Repetition is the mother of skill. So I kept visualizing, I kept focusing, then I got, get a call from the millionaire fight promoter, the big fight promoter of the, uh, of the organization I was fighting for. He uh, smoked cigars and big guys. He fights me to his ass. He goes, go, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you should, I'm going to get you a shot at the world title. <sighs> You're going to become world champion. And then I'm taking you to Hollywood, California. I'm going to put you in movies. <laughs> I'm going to make you a star. All you got to do is sign right here. <laughs> I'm like, here's the cool thing. <laughs> this contract came with a brand new car. And guess what color it was? <laughs> yes! So I signed. Bada boom, bada bang, baby. Sure enough, one year later, at the Omni Arena in Atlanta, Georgia, in front of thousands of people, I hear the words I've worked for, that I dreamed of, and the new light welterweight world kickboxing champion, Jerry Golden Boy Shrimbo. And the audience is chanting, Jerry, Jerry, I'm in the ring and I'm crying. I'm going, oh man, I did it. I'm like, my life is going to be so much more amazing now. It's I'm on top of the world. Everything's going to be great. It was for a while. And then I let everything get to my head. And I let everyone starting to influence me. Show me your crowd and I will show you your future. I was, I got stupid. I got stupid. I was partying all the time. I let my guard down. I was fighting 24-7. If I wasn't fighting contenders in the ring, I was fighting bullies in the nightclub. If anyone were to mess with me or my friends, I'd be more than happy to introduce their fist their face to my fist. But it was my inner demons that were kicking my butt. And it all began when? When I started hanging out with the wrong people. Let me tell you something. The more you get your act together, the, more you, the closer that you get to your dreams, the more you get things right and you're going on that right path, just get ready for this. You're going to have people come into your way trying to get, steer you down. I don't, <laughs> some people call them tests. You're going to have tests. They're going to try to steer you in the wrong direction. It was crazy. I was partying. I gave up on myself. I stopped setting goals. I stopped working on myself. And, I, and my crowd was getting worse. So I sold everything I owned. I sold every piece of gold I had. Ah, boy, did they get a good deal on it. <laughs> I sold all my jewelry, all my clothes. I sold everything. I had 750 bucks to my name. I moved to Hollywood, California to pursue my dream of becoming a movie star. I was so out of my comfort zone. I had no idea how I was going to do it. I had no education on acting, on anything. There was no internet at the time. So instead of going to the boxing gym, well, first thing I started doing was I started, I, I broke open a journal. And I said, okay, new dream, bang, new dream. Movie star, movies. These are the actors I want to work with. These are the directors I want to work with. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, and I'm talking to people. I'm asking friends. I'm getting new friends. My crowd changed. I started hanging out with good, positive people that had dreams like me. They wanted to be actors. They wanted to be in the movies. And I started writing down things. Instead of going to the boxing gym, I went to acting class. I was so out, far out of my comfort zone. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it was crazy. <laughs> I've been blessed enough to be in this business to get my butt kicked by Drew Barrymore and Charlie's Angels. Oh. I battled it out, I don't know how many times, went to war with Jet Li and the Masters, had an amazing battle with Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 3. 
I've worked in shows like The Flash, I Zombie, Travelers, uh, uh, Supernatural, playing get this, Ramiel, the Prince of Hell. Yeah. And I got to do my own fight scenes. It was, it was amazing. And I, I believe that I helped create this because I put the energy out. I wrote it down. You can do the same, the same thing. I'm working on a show right now that I got a reoccurring role on that I'm actually I'm leaving on Saturday to go shoot in Nanaimo, Vancouver Island. It's called Chesapeake Shores. It's a Hallmark series. I'm playing Nashville music producer to one of the stars of the show. It's a great role. I've got so many things going on, but I'm, I continue to get out of my comfort zone. I continue to set new goals. I continue to discover new gifts. And I continue to go after new dreams. I challenge each and every one of you to stand up to your fears and get out of your comfort zone. Don't settle. Do not settle. I challenge you to discover your gifts. You're born with them. They're in you. You just got to find out what they are. And you're, you're the only one that can do them. And I challenge you to go at, use those gifts to go after your dreams. And don't stop until you get there. And if there's a roadblock, there's an obstacle, bang. Oh, you see an obstacle, go through it, then just get, go over it. Go around it. If it, it what does it say? If there's, a, if, if there's a door, if the doors don't open, knock it down. If there is no door, build a door. You create your own reality. You are gifted. You are talented. You are blessed. Everyone say, I am gifted. I am talented. I am blessed. The words that follow I am will shape your reality. They are two of the most powerful words in the world. Muhammad Ali did it best. You guys know Muhammad Ali? I am the greatest. Oh, man. The guy is the greatest ever. He's the greatest of all time. He did it. That's it. Don't let anyone else tell you other than you are gifted, talented, blessed, and you've got, I'm telling you, you've got everything going for you. You just got to do it. You were young. Begin now to be great later. Accept the challenges so that you may feel the exhilaration, and oh, what a feeling it is, that exhilaration of victory. Do not be the victim. Be the victor. What you put out, you get back. Create a wonderful reality, guys. I love you and thank you for having me today. Thank you.